Now, chapter five is the courts and the judicial offices. These are where we have most of the independent institutions, which is uh, section 97. The courts and the judicial offices, it's re essentially remain the same, but there are some significant changes here. For the first time, although for years everybody's saying judiciary has been independent, etc., we're truly making the judiciary independent. And what we are saying is that Parliament must ensure that judiciary firstly is adequate financial and other resources, and the judiciary has control of its own budget and finances. And you'll also see in the judicial section that we have a judicial services commission. The JSC will appoint, retain, and terminate the services of all persons that work within the judicial system. At the moment, if the Chief Justice wants to transfer a court clerk from Bar to Lotoka, he effectively has to get the permission of a public service commission. That is not true independence. The Chief Justice, the Chief Registrar knows, or they know, how a court clerk may be performing, not PSC. We've had people who've been transferred into the Judicial Services um, Office, for example, with the council in the, 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 the domestic courts, etc., who have absolutely no experience, who've come from probably Department of Cooperatives, and they're now put in the Judicial Services. That does not augur well for the judicial services in Fiji and the independence of the judiciary. So given very exclusive um, uh, powers in respect of their own management of their own affairs. Within that section also, and sorry, just by way of interest, section 104, because some of you may be interested in this, is that previously the Judicial Services Commission consisted of the chairman of the Public Service Commission, the Chief Justice, and the president of the Fiji Law Society. Now the JSC will co consist of the Chief Justice, the President of the Court of Appeal, Permanent Secretary for Justice, a legal practitioner with no less than 15 years experience, we probably should have put unblemished record, and a person not being a legal practitioner. In other words, somebody from civil society, somebody from an NGO, because we need people from civil society to have an input. So there's a sense of stakeholdership, a sense of ownership, in terms of the appointment of members to the judiciary. So that's a, uh, a shift there that's been made. Now, the other also provision which is very important, and we've done that throughout the, the Constitution, in the 1997 Constitution, for example, if you wanted to remove the Chief Justice um, for you know, misconduct or for uh, medical reasons, you needed to put in place a tribunal and you, would, you could appoint a medical board or you could appoint a, a group of people who could carry out investigations into the misconduct. It's very rare, but it could, could be done. In the same way, you have a similar provision for the removal of the president, for the removal of constitutional officers, which we've applied to now. But for the first time, we've said that whatever the recommendation of the medical board is or the tribunal is, it must be followed. You don't have the discretion not to follow it. And secondly, that report must be made public. So all of you can see and know what is happening. So that is very, very important in terms of creating transparency within the system and people don't willy-nilly put tribunals in place and remove people out of offices. In that section also, we have the uh, various other, what we may call the quasi-judicial offices, Independent Legal Services Commission. Um, that sets it out, it's already in existence, but gives it the constitutional authority. FICEC, Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption. The Solicitor General, the DPP, the Mercy Commission, the Legal Aid Commission. The Legal Aid Commission has been for the first time included in the Constitution. And if you would have seen, uh, when you get the chance to read the Constitution, they obviously now, we've had for a number of years, you know, people talk about the rule of law and talk about the independence of the judiciary and talk about how everybody's equal before the law. Principle sounds wonderful, but does it actually happen in practice? So now in the Constitution, you have a provision that, for example, if you are arrested, 
but I'm sure many of you can afford a lawyer, but if you're somebody who could not afford a lawyer and it serves the interest of justice, then you are entitled to, under the Constitution, to have access to legal aid. And that is very, very important because in terms of everyday application of, the, of, of justice, you need to have access to lawyers. You need to have access to the judicial system on a level playing field. And that is, this is what this constitution provides and the Legal Aid Commission is again put in place to ensure those sorts of services and are given in fact a charge. All of these institutions are given a charge over the consolidated fund. So the consolidated fund, in other words government finances, must always have finances available for these institutions. Because these institutions are critical to running the whole apparatus of the state and independently also.